We continue to preview the 2023 college football season today. Our stop is Helen Montana, and we get to visit with Troy Purcell, the head football coach for the Carroll Saints. Coach eight and three last season. I do want to talk about 2023, but it's a program that that makes it to the playoffs year after year. Such a pedigree there. Eight and three last season. When last we saw the Saints, uh, you guys were playing in a very, very cold Des Moines, taking on a tough Grandview team. Three-point loss there, but you make it to the playoffs once again. Talk about your season. Yeah, you know what? Uh, just really excited how we ended the season. You know, uh, we started off three and two, and you're going, wow, this baby can go one way or the other. <clears throat> and our coaches and our players, you know, stepped it up and and found a way to, you know, get to that 5-0 and record at the end to make it uh, eight and two going to the playoffs. Winning the conference again was pretty cool and having the automatic uh, – opportunity to go to the playoffs. Uh, Grandview, outstanding football team. That whole um, Iowa conference over there with Morningside and Grandview, those are the two that we faced, uh, Northwestern, you know, and then, uh, but anyway, they're very good teams. And uh, yeah, what a cold day. You know, I've been in a lot of Montana winners and a lot of Montana games and uh, that wind coming across there was, it was, uh, had a little bite to it with the humidity and, and uh, we, you know, had a good effort. You know, it was, uh, like I said, a three-point game. We missed a PA or a field goal right before halftime. That would have made it three to three. You know, we're up seven to three in the third quarter uh, in, a, in a short situation, and we ended up having a turnover. Uh, then we shanked the punt, and then we kind of blew, blew the coverage, and then found a way to get back and score, and then you're down by three. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, it, I was very proud of our our guys. Um, you know, that 21 or 22 season where we had the COVID, we ended up going to Morningside and wow, we got boat race there. Um, it was a kind of apples and oranges a little bit on the different seasons, you know, when they played, who played and when. Um, but anyway, so we really bounced back from that, showing that we could be uh, a national content uh, contender. So our guys are believing. And I, I think anytime that you see the name Carol Saints, you have to expect something uh, it's going to be a challenge if you're going up against you all. Five consecutive wins, as you mentioned, to end the regular season and the conference championship as well. You bring back a lot from last season. I mean, I, let me let me throw some names out here because following you all, these are names that, that we saw quite often. Of course, Jack Perka, the quarterback position, Duncan Kraft, Baxter Tuggle running the ball, Cameron Rothy as well. Uh, talk about your offense then, preview what the Saints are going to show on offense this year. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, uh, we and in the two deep last year in the Grandview game, um, you know, Matt Burgess didn't play in that game, uh, but he was an exceptional running back that we had, all American as a freshman. And then uh, Tony Collins, you know, he uh, he was that you know the big tight end from Texas, uh, had a great season and a great career. So we're going to lose both of those. Um, our offensive center got the Remington Award uh, uh, award for the nation to be in the best center. Uh, in the nation, which was pretty exciting. And he was also a second team All-American. So those are kind of the three that we lost that were kind of in the two deep, um, you know, with Andrew Carter going to Weaver here two weeks ago. So it was uh, kind of a, a blow there a little bit, but everybody has their dreams. And and uh, But we are happen to be fortunate right now to be pretty deep in the old lineman room. So it works out. It worked out okay. You know, we just want the best for Andrew. We'd rather have him here, but we understand. Um, the uh, Yeah, Jack Perka, man, he, he can anticipate a throw better than anybody that I've been around. You know, when you tell a receiver to get your hands up because that ball is going to be hitting you in the face, yeah, well, it actually can happen now because Jack's pretty accurate and, and really understands the, you know, uh, the concepts and when to throw, you know, the the timing on the breaks is just unbelievable. So he'll be a junior this year. You know, it was a uh, third game <clears throat> his freshman year. He ended up earning the position. Um, so it's exciting to see him him play and throw. And again, we get him for two more years. Uh, uh, Baxter, our running back room, you got Baxter Tuggle and you got uh, uh, Duncan Kraft, two fifth-year seniors or COVID, whatever. I don't – we're finally going to be over that here in a little bit <laughs> of what these kids are. Um, so – but they're going to do a, an exceptional job. You got a couple uh, young guys, and Cormac Ben's going to be coming up into that group. And Max uh, Lehman is also a, a, a returner in that group. So we've got five – or two veterans and then two guys that are, you know, coming up as uh, as the next ones to fit in. 
Uh, on the offensive uh, line, uh, like I said, you got five deep. You got Tim Sellers, you got Sebastian Cook, you got Connor Quick, you got Jaden Lamb, you got Hunter Meekum, and then you got about four or five kids that can fill in as a number two. Uh, being young on the line for that many years really developed our younger guys also uh, to give them opportunities to understand and, and to be able to play faster, but not have to put them, you know, out into the you know, to the wolves there right away. Um, so I feel really good about the depth of those guys. And if you have a good front, you should have some success. Uh, tie down position, uh, we have Carson Ochoa uh, that'll help really uh, step up the role. Uh, he's probably was the most complete uh, tight end that we have. Very, very athletic. Uh, you got Mitch Baralt there, you got Jack England, you got uh, Ryan Rickman. Um, so those guys are going to fill the the role at the, the tight end position. So that'll be that'll be good and exciting. And Zach uh, Schlotman, uh, he was another one out of the five. So we had got five good guys coming back there. Receiver wise, you got Cam Rothy. You know he uh, in Hamilton, Montana, he was forty one touchdowns. I think it's still a state record, you know, over his career. So it was pretty pretty cool to have him. He'll be a senior this year. And uh, so then you got Jaden Harrison is also a person that's been there. Uh, Luke Jensen, who is kind of the older guys. And then you got some explosive guys that are coming up with uh, Chris Aculchin that really came on last year. He'll be up, you know, a redshirt uh, sophomore this year. Very explosive uh, individual. Uh, Jake Brown will be back, another Coeur d'Alene kid. Um, so he's very, very explosive also. So, again, that room is pretty deep also. So you're going to see a little bit more five wide uh, situations where we're getting a tight end out and putting a few more guys on the field and kind of spreading the wealth there a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I feel real good about, um, you know, what we have coming back. So, um, and then on the defensive side, I don't know if we're going to get into that also. Um, yeah, it's, we have uh, Grant Kocab, who was the MVP of the Frontier Conference. He was an All-American last year in track and football. So, um Exceptional young man, very explosive, very hard to block. And so when you get a defensive uh, MVP of a conference as a nose guard, you know he's giving some people some troubles. And uh, so, but losing him was tough, you know, but we got some other guys that'll come up. You got Mike Mafu that also left out of that interior D line. Uh, you had uh, 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 Colin Sassano as one of the linebackers, top uh, Montana kid, a uh, capital high kid here. And then uh, Rex Irby was kind of our safety captain leader. Um, so there was, and then Zach Spiroff, uh, he's actually helping us out coaching this year. He played corner last year as a, as a true freshman started. And so um, losing those guys a little t took a little bit bigger hit on defense, probably than offense. I uh, feel real good about the guys that are coming back. Um, on the D line there, you got Garrett Warden. He's a big six five kid from Wyoming. He's got two more seasons left. Uh, excited about watching him. Uh, Hunter Peck. Again, a kid out of Colorado should do have do real well. <clears throat> Jake Walk out of Boise area, he should you know produce pretty well. We got a major all or not a major, uh, but uh, the Navy on Ali. Uh, he, he's an up and coming defensive lineman there. Also, you got Forrest Saguaro, a hell of a, a Bengal kid that was in town. Started as a true freshman, got a lot of time as a true freshman. So excited about him also. That linebacker quarterback. Um, you got Tucker Jones, I think, uh, you know, is one of the uh, guys that will be coming back again, a Hamilton kid. He uh, He's excited to watch. He, he's a no-nonsense guy. He'll tell you like it is. If he doesn't like something, he'll tell you right to your face, put a finger, you know, in your, you know, and, and he told us the line with the guys, which is which is really cool to see. Um, you got Jacob Resch there uh, as a linebacker. He's going to be doing a great job on the inside also. He'll be a senior. Uh, ben Held, uh, an up-and-comer, very smart. I mean, this kid's going to be a doctor. So I don't know. I think he misspelled his name on the uh, on, on these ACT. I think he had a 30 or whatever the max is. He got he got it. So uh, maybe he missed one. I don't know. But he's uh, he's he's pretty special uh, player. On the back end there, you got uh, Tug Smith as a safety and uh, Caden Gardner. Uh, those two guys will be returning also uh, with Connor McGree. Um, or Thomas McGree, uh, Connor's his brother. Uh, Thomas McGree also there in the back end getting some reps. 
And then outside linebacker, you got a Cam Pruitt and Gunnar Julio. Uh, those guys are our stud outside linebackers. They're going to have a great time. Uh, good opportunity there. And then corner, you got Eliza Larson. And we got to find another corner on that other side. Uh, we're still in the process. Spring spring camp came along real well. We picked up uh, Anthony Cooper. That uh, was a transfer that came in. We got Mason Green. We got Eastern Durham. So we got some bodies there. We just got to see which one is going to step up and get into that lead role. Um, so, again, excited about what we have on the offense, defense, and, you know, our special teams. You know, I think that is somewhere uh, the Spencer Bergen was the national player of the uh, week uh, versus Eastern Oregon last year. And he had the game winner uh, to make it happen down there. And uh, so, yeah, so um, still – Long snapping still worries me. I we still I got to find a little more crisp long snapper, and we've seen our guys to develop a little bit more there. But again, exciting times of Carroll, exciting times of the guys that are coming back. Long tradition here, six con- uh, national championships and forty-five now conference championships, and so um, yeah, big shoes to fill and and uh, these last five years. But again, I think our guys have really responded. Our coaching staffs have really bought in and and uh, really believed in, in Carroll and and uh, the program and the, and the players that we have. All right, Coach, I've learned a lot already. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just ask one more question then and, and uh, pitch that for you. We usually end talking about the, the schedule, and your schedule will be a little bit different this year because of the introduction to Arizona Christian into the Frontier Conference. That means not as many duplicated games. Uh, the season does have the bookend of Montana Tech, one of them a, a non-conference game. They play on a Thursday night. You go there August 31st. You end your season at home against Montana Tech. Uh, you do have a couple of, of good uh, games coming in, of course, obviously the, the Frontier Conference games as well. St. Thomas makes its first trip west of the Mississippi, and you all will host them on September 9th. And then we had it on a previous video. You all are hosting Arizona Christian on the 16th. That's actually on September 23rd. So can you tell us a little bit about your schedule this year? Yeah, no, excited. You know, draw the hat, getting Montana Tech, the rival, uh, Carol, Mont- you know, Tech game is, is unbelievable. So it'd be great for the gate uh, for both our schools. Um, they still matter, even though they're non conference games. The rankings are so important uh, to make sure that uh, you're doing, have success early in the season and the middle of the season and the end of the season to make sure you can get some rankings up as high as you can. Um, because uh, if, you know, after last year, we're always playing the number one or number two team in the nation you know, right out of the gate. It'd be nice to be able to, you know, get to a point where we can host a game at some time, you know, and, but it takes winning early and Montana Tech is, that's going to be an exciting game. It's our copper game down there uh, under the lights on a Thursday at six o'clock and uh, uh, excited about that opportunity to play at night. Uh, They'll have a, we'll have school that next day, but I should be able to get them that Saturday off, you know, and kind of give them a break, kind of a mini buy. So that was another positive with it before we go into the next uh, game uh, versus St. Thomas University. Um, Unbelievable uh, team, very explosive, very young team. Uh, as in hasn't been in the program or in any of that long, I think 12 years or something like that. Uh, they beat, uh, they lost to a division one team by five and Kaiser, uh, the eventual runner up by five. Um, other than that, they're nine and two. Uh, so they're ranked number 15 at the end. Oh, man, they got, and then there was a couple teams that won their conference and got the automatic bid and it kind of bumped them out of the top 16, but they're a very, very good team football team and so it'll be great to see them uh, and again that'll be a ranked team coming in I think Montana Tech will be ranked at least in the top 25 maybe top 20 and then you got Rocky on the road down there and they're always tough to play uh, next game then you got Arizona Christian again it should be a ranked team they won their conference last year uh, and uh, so again uh, in the top three I'm sorry three out of four games for the first four who's going to be a ranked opponents and then you get to the Frontier Conference which is a fist fight every weekend and so um it's uh it's exciting it's going to be a fun and an exciting uh, uh season this next year and and again very good teams and and uh we just gotta perform start fast is our motto this year we we finished pretty well we just gotta start fast and again play good in the middle and you know finish at the end but you know the emphasis this year is start fast all right, start fast. Well, I look, I'm looking forward to seeing that, and you will start fast. That opportunity, again, 
August 31st, Montana Tech on the road there. It should be a big, big weekend. Coach Troy Purcell, thank you so much for taking time with us today. I know it's busy. A little bit cooler where you are there in Montana than it is where I am right now. Summer underway, though, and I just uh, wish you the best for this summer and, and have a good camp. Thanks again, sir, for taking time with us today here on the Summit. You bet. Appreciate you. Thank you.